This video is on the basics of making a face screen cutting board. I'm not gonna jump into the fine details of the type of, of this type of work because if it's your first time doing it, I think you should get your feet wet before you jump into the more complex things. That being said, if you want me to do some videos on the more complex things like juice grooves and hand holds and you know different kinds of patterning and stuff like that, go and let me know in the comments below and I can make additional more detailed videos on those things. But that's not the focus of this video. This video is to give you a basic understanding of the process and see if it's something you want to do. I mean, it's not hard. It's pretty simple and you can do it with very little tooling. I did my first board with just a table saw and a sander. So if it's your first time really getting into this process and, and you've never done anything like it before, I want you to, this starts a fire for you to do your due diligence and learn how to use your tools, learn how to use them safely and effectively. And if it's something you're already pretty confident in, and you just want to try this out, I hope this gives you the passion to go ahead and get out there and start it. That being said, if you guys like the video, please subscribe. I'm working on making more content like this. Um, and with that, let's get started. So wood selection. I went with a hard maple and a black walnut with a nice piece of bloodwood accent. You can really use whatever wood you want as long as it's a good hard wood with tight grain. Now for making stock pieces, it's pretty simple. You're gonna measure them out to the width you want. I chose an inch and a half on these. Rip them with a table saw. And then I took mine over to a joiner because I don't have a planer and just join it all four edges. Get nice and square. If you don't have either one of those, what you can do is rip them with the table saw, get them nice and clean, line them up next to each other, and use a pencil to mark high and low spots and hand sand it till they fit flush together. This first glue up was for the accent piece and it was a difficult glue up to do trying to get the pressure just right without letting things slide around and keeping everything equal. Um, you always want to remember you don't want to put too much pressure on a glue joint. It'll squeeze out all the glue and it just won't do you any good. So I'm not going to show you the entire process I went to to figure out this joint. Um, instead I'll just show you kind of what I ended up doing. Which is not pretty and I could have used a hundred different ways better but it's the way it ended up going and all in all it worked out pretty well. Next I took it to the table saw and squared off the edges, removed that little overhang of the blood wood so I had something nice to go run with and then I took it over to the joiner and removed all the excess material from the sides. Remember I had all those nice pieces of maple that were already cleaned and ready to go so I wanted this to also be nice and cleaned up. So now you're going to take the boards and kind of lay them out, figure out which face you want up, you know, will look good. That one had a deformity in it, so I wanted that to be on the edge. So when I did the routing and stuff and hand planing, it would it would go away. Um, just sit there and, and kind of play with it, figure out what the layout you want is, and then start gluing up. You'll need to glue one side of the board. So get it all nice and gluey, and remember, don't over tighten it. Get everything as square as you can, make sure it's flat and level, and then... <clears throat> get some good clamp to it and wipe off the excess glue. You don't want a lot of that laying around, especially if you're gonna run it through a planer. For the final shaping, I sent mine off and had it planed because I again, don't have a planer. You can do it without one. You can do it with a block plane, hand plane, jack plane, or you can take a ruler and a sander oh. and use the ruler to shine a flashlight behind it and see the high and lows and mark them and sand it until it is completely flush. It's not particularly easy, but it is completely doable. I did not make a video for the hand grooves. Um, that'll be a later video. For the final sanding, you're gonna take a pencil and just kind of rub it across the top and then sand in you know, consistent patterns until that goes away. And you do that a couple of times to make sure you're good and smooth. Um, I noticed a couple fissures, so I just took some sawdust out of my sander Added a little glue and mixed up, made a little paste, and that's your wood putty. Don't go buy wood putty, just do it that way. It's an exact color match. So I rubbed it on in, and I let it dry, and then I went ahead and finished my sanding. For popping the grain, really you do is spritz it with a bottle of water. And what that does is it causes those frayed loose fibers from the sanding to rise up when they get wet. And then you just set it out in the sun. You can use a heat gun, whatever you got to do to dry it off. And what happens is those fibers will rise up 
and dry in that spot and then you can re-sand it and it'll be perfectly smooth. For oil and waxing, you're going to want to put mineral oil on your board and let it soak in for a couple of days, checking on it until it doesn't soak it in. It might take a couple of days, it might take one day, whatever it takes. Once it's all soaked in, dry it off with a rag, and that's it. Alright, that's it. That's all there is to it. The only additional step you could take is adding butcher's block wax. Uh, it's pretty easy to make. You can buy it if you want to, or you can make it. I'm going to post a recipe video here in the next couple of days for how to make a really simple two-ingredient, three-ingredient if you want to, butcher's block wax. Um, you will have to re-oil these boards on occasion. When they're starting to look a little dry, and you'll know when they look a little dry. Just hit with some butcher box wax and just rub it in with your fingers. Let it sit overnight a few hours. Hit it with a terry cloth towel and buff it out, and it's good to go again. If you ever need to refinish it because you've been chopping the crap out of it or it's just got gouge marks in it, all you have to do is take it back out. Hit it with your sander, with that pencil again, just flatten it out. A little more oil, and it's good to go again. They're great. Um, you know, if you guys like the video, please like and subscribe, and I will be making more of these soon.